actually conned themselves. Well, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to show you how childhood, society, and culture created the perfect storm for these women to unknowingly con themselves into being swindled. Now, I know that's a big proposition I'm making, but bear with me. Now, before we get started, I want to make four distinctions. The first one is this, and it's huge. The swindler was consciously aware that he was swindling these, all of these women. He knew what he was doing. The women were not consciously aware. They have no idea that they were doing their own swindling, and it's because of the things I'm going to show you about. So, but that's, that's key. He knew it. They didn't, but they were doing the same thing. Number two, the women are not to blame, and they are responsible. It's both. They're not to blame, and they are responsible. I'm going to show you that too as well. I'll show you specifically how they're not to blame and why scientifically they are responsible for the swindling, uh, the, the part they played in the swindling. Number three, if you can listen long enough to discover, you will discover how your anger at me or worse, you're accusing me of victim blaming is actually you conning yourself. It's true. And finally, number four, if you choose not to stay to the end because that conning of yourself gets so severe and you get so angry at me, then you will rob yourself of the chance of learning how to protect yourself from a swindler like this, what really is a narcissistic sociopath, a predator. And that's why I'm doing this video, because both men and women, I've been conned by someone like this. And it's because we don't realize how we play an equal responsible role in the dynamic. Nobody ever talks about it. These documentaries only talk about one side and it's robbing you of safety. And that's why I'm doing this video. All right. And you're going to see, I'm not victim blaming. I'm not blaming the women. I'm empowering them and, and bringing truth to this whole dynamic, which will set all of us free and raise our abilities to create relationship, find love, and defend ourselves against predators beyond anything that video or anything else will give you. So the first thing to recognize is the reason that this happened and the reason I, I can prove all of this to you is because of two major advances, advances in the neuroscience and psychology fields. One is done by, it was done by Lisa Feldman. It's been done for She's proven it over a very long period of time, but it, it, she shared her discovery uh, in 2017, and it's her work around how emotions are made. She came out with this book in 2000, late 2017, early 2018, How Emotions Are Made, and it completely transformed everything we know about how emotions work in our brain. And I'm going to share with you, and you're going to see the old model and why we, how we think emotions and the brain and body work is all faulty. And that's why this is so important that you listen to this. And this is why these part of why the women are not responsible. It just came out. It's just been discovered in the last five years. They didn't know about this. They were in the midst of the swindling. They're not to blame. Okay. The second reason is because of my own discovery, uh, something I call the worst day cycle. Now, ironically, my book came out at the exact time, almost the exact time as hers. They coincide each other. And so you're going to discover in this video how the way our emotions are made and the worst day cycle combine to creating both of these dynamics and how these women actually con themselves and in part con the swindler played a part, an equal part in this dynamic. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to read to you directly from how emotions are made. So you get an idea of, of how we become attracted to other people. And one of the first thing to recognize is everyone says, you made me think, feel, or do. It's not even possible. She has clinically and scientifically proven beyond the shadow of a doubt that no one ever makes us feel anything. The love and, and all emotions you feel, you create those inside yourself. Nobody makes you, we do that. We, we create a fantasy of emotion inside of ourselves. Let me 
show you how it works. She says, in part, emotions are not built in. They are not universal, but they vary from culture to culture. Remember, culture is one of the reasons these women swindled themselves. They are not triggered. We create them. They emerge as a combination of the physical properties of the body, a brain that wires itself to adhere to whatever environment it develops in, and your culture and upbringing which provide that environment. So do you see, emotions are created by three things. The physiology of your body. And so your body, you are, you're not born with emotions, you're born with basic feelings. And those feelings are comfort, discomfort, agitation, excitement, not anger, sadness. That whole model is a lie. That's what she's proven is that, that we're born with these distinct emotions, we're not. It's that the way we've gone about all of this stuff is based on old science and this is, you know, she discovered a whole new understanding of how all of this works, okay? So our physiology, the physical um, state of our body throughout the day is one of the keys. Now that physiology can be influenced by are we hungry? tired. And so we will then create moods and affects. And I'm going to stay out of that. But that's the first piece, physiology. The second piece is the culture, the society we were raised in, childhood, parenting. So those are the three ways that we create emotions through our physiology, through the culture and society, and through our environment, our upbringing, our raising. And in that, what happens is we then make assumptions through our life experiences. We learn as we take in sensory information, we create, and I'm choosing that word specifically, she's proven, we create definitions based on what we've seen repeatedly. So if you grew up in a family that slapped each other and punched each other in the face and called that marriage, your culture, and your environment and your parenting and childhood would say, that's love. That's what it is. It's not universal because that's what she proved is the old studies were faulty. The, the methods they used were inaccurate. They didn't see they had an inherent bias in all of them. And that's why that whole model has been disproven. Okay. So what she goes on to say, emotions are not reactions to the world. See, we all think like these women in the video think they're reacting to him. They weren't. You are not a passive receiver of sensory input, but an active constructor of your emotions. From sensory input and past experience, your brain constructs meaning and prescribes action. So do you see our senses taken in the information? We see our parents creating these behaviors and they put definitions to it. And so we learn, oh, that's what that means. Now, the video starts out, the whole documentary starts out with the one lady telling you her dream of romance. I wrote down what she said verbatim and you, this is gonna blow you away. The next, stay with me the next two minutes, I'm gonna completely transform your whole idea on how love, relationships, and the world works regarding emotions, attraction, everything, and you're gonna see immediately how she played an active role in swindling this man. This is what she said. The moment I get nervous, then I know there's something special here. I'm after that all-consuming, kind of what you've grown up with. The first memories I have of love is Disney. I had memorized the entire Beauty and the Beast cassette. I love how she's just a small town girl, just like me, hoping for something bigger. She meets this person. Then she saves him, in a sense, and he saves her. They go into a different life together. It just sticks with you like the feeling of a prince coming to save you. I think that even though you know it's not real, it's still with you. I think everyone has that little bit of hope deep down inside. It will be as magical as they are portraying it to be. 
Do you see what she just did to herself? Now that you know how emotion works, did you see it? Did you hear it? What did she start by saying? Nervous. Why did she, where did she learn about nervousness? Disney. What's the beauty in the beast? What's he start as? A beast. He's scary. <gasps> She's looking. She learned from culture and childhood. Fear. I'm not attracted unless I'm afraid. What else did she learn? I'm looking for a beast. I need, do you remember how, like, I'm sorry, I've been with narcissists. Like, I can see a narcissist a mile away. As soon as they showed his picture, I saw a beast. I was like, the, the emptiness and darkness in his eyes and the false facade of his whole manner is, I'm like, no thank you. But she, she grew up and created, remember emotion, she created her own construction of what love looks like. It looks like a beast. A prince that she can save. Why did she give him the money? Go back and watch the video. And every time he asked for money, she kept giving it and she flatly says, because I wanted to save him. Just like the beauty and the beast. She doesn't realize it, but she's conning him. She wants her Disney dream. She's gonna save this beast and make him her prince. Sorry, I'm just like, when I saw this, I'm like, this is so powerful. What she doesn't realize, because nobody's taught how any of this works, is that belief that I can save somebody. This is the con job. That's a God complex. The belief that I'm powerful enough, and this is what I always talk about. This, now, this is really going to test how you create your own emotions and are going to try and blame me based on your history because I'm going to be challenging your whole beliefs, everything you, your whole fantasies that you've created about how life works. But this is what I talk about where the person attracted to a narcissist is just as narcissistic. Do you hear how narcissistic that is? She thinks she can save him, that she's powerful enough. That's a godlike complex. That's what happens to the people who end up with narcissistic sociopaths. They are just as manipulative, but they're manipulative from the disempowered victim position where the narcissist is, is manipulative and controlling from the falsely empowered. See, he's false. None of it's real, right? He's stealing from everybody. It's false power. Well, her power is false too. She thinks she's a God who can save him, send him enough money, and he'll love me like a prince. It's a mutual con job. Again, she's not to blame because remember, he's conscious. Because it's a society, because it was only five years ago, the worst day cycle and how emotions were made came out. Nobody knows this. She's not to blame. You cannot blame somebody for doing something she wasn't even aware of. Nobody's taught us that this is how these dynamics work, how emotions work, how the worst day cycle works. She also doesn't realize that what she's describing in the Disney movie is something called love addiction. We've all been raised that that is love, the beauty and the beast. Well, the hallmark of love addiction is to create a fantasy of a super being, of a prince or princess that's going to be, how did she put it? What, what did she say? Um, she meets this person and saves him. And in a sense, he saves her. That's all fantasy. That's not love. That's not how it works. They go into a different life together. It just sticks with you. Like this, she's, she's a, at the time, a mid, mid late 20s year old woman living as a six year old in a fantasy. She's not even present. She's creating and living out of a construct of emotions that she's implanted into herself. Nobody's done it to her but nobody taught her this is how it works. She's not to blame. She had no chance. She's not responsible for that. But she did con herself unknowingly. Now, as Lisa Feldman Barrett, who is cited, the top 1% of all scientists cited because of her work in the world, 
she talks about how this dynamic works in the book. And she tells a story of how we classify our life experiences. And she goes out on a date. So a guy asked her out, she's in college, goes out on this date, isn't really into the guy but decides to go out and then in the middle of dinner, all of a sudden she starts getting this flutter of feeling, nervousness and everything, right? Starts to realize, well, gosh, I'm getting the feeling. Maybe I really like this guy. Well, she starts to get more animated, more into the date and everything. And they end on good terms. She goes back home, walks in the door and throws up everywhere. For the next week, she's sick in bed for, with the flu. Remember what causes emotions, how we create it, our physiology. And then the second thing is it's based on experiences and we draw conclusions and our brain becomes a predictor. This is what our brain does to try and save energy and, and run our life. Our brain is just here to run our life, okay? And so it's constantly what it tries to do to make it easy on itself is it learns from past experience and then projects those past experience, the meanings onto the future and in the moment. So what she had done unknowingly to her was mix up past experiences. Butterfly feeling means I like, love this guy. No, it means you're about to get the flu. <laughs> she didn't know that. She was younger, newer in her life experiences didn't understand that her physiology it was creating this feeling and then she was pulling life experiences from her parenting, childhood, everything to determine this meaning. She completely misunderstood it and so did the, these women, all right? They don't know because we don't teach the stuff. They're doing the best they can. The other thing to recognize is, do you know where that butterfly feeling comes from too? That nervousness, remember, she talked about She's looking to be afraid. Well, now we're getting into how the worst day cycle works. What I discovered, all of us in childhood go through trauma, all of us. The problem is people equate trauma with severe events as though trauma is only if um, there's a, a natural disaster, like it has to be that severe. A traumatic event is any life event that creates a negative emotional experience. We've all been through trauma, severe trauma. Now what happens in trauma and, the, and the, the ideal way that trauma happens to us in childhood, to all of us, is because we don't teach how to parent because even if we did, we're all perfectly imperfect. What parents do is when we make a mistake, instead of saying, that behavior was wrong, they send the message, you as a person are wrong and bad. <clears throat> so, we end up developing a shame core that I'm defective. Also, we learn about relationships from our primary relationships as a child, from our parents, watching them and their relationship with us. Nobody ends up with a narcissistic sociopath unless they've seen complete chaos, manipulation, and, and shame and disregard in their childhood. A person who more than likely, she didn't talk about her childhood, but I've done this enough that if I were to sit and ask them about their childhoods, all of the women involved that got scammed, they'd all be the same. There was abandonment, neglect, there was high levels of shame and pure chaos in all of their childhoods because you will not end up with a narcissistic sociopath. We've known this for decades on basic behavioral science is we learn about relationship from our childhood relationships, our parents and brothers and sisters. And so we are infant, we are drawn to it, just like how emotions are made. It, it becomes a predictive, remember our brain, our brain survives on predictions and it tries to recreate and pull in those experiences. And that's why this woman only is attracted to what she's already experienced in her childhood. She's looking for the beast, all right? So as I was saying, every parent directly or indirectly, and most often not on purpose. This isn't about blaming parents either. They're just perfectly imperfect. Again, we just like these women, nobody teaches this stuff. Nobody is aware. <clears throat> But instead of sending the message that what we did was bad or wrong, they send us the message that who we are is bad or wrong. Now, trauma and shame are 
um, conditions of powerlessness. We lose our inherent power because do you see, we're an infant, we're a young child, a developing child, a teenage child. Survival depends on our caregivers. So do you see, if we don't adapt in that moment, if we don't create emotions, definitions from the life experiences that give us a way and put us in that victim position so that we can survive, we won't survive. We give ourselves away. And this is where we pick either the falsely empowered, shame-based, or the, the disempowered. And so the falsely empowered, that tends to be the narcissistic sociopath or the, just the falsely empowered codependent. These are most successful people, athletes, politicians, business people, they're falsely empowered, most. Not all, but most, all right? And those that are attracted to them tend to be the covert, manipulative victim. It's the disempowered, and again, I say it's manipulative because it has a God complex tied into it and the thought that they can rescue and help the other person. It's a distorted view in our society of what help looks like and what kindness looks like. Because as a child, the only way they got noticed from the shame was to give themselves away. Like these women gave, gave themselves away emotionally, spiritually, and definitely financially. They kept giving. That's a shame core. That's a disempowered shame core that's trying to control. Please see me, notice me, love me, don't leave me from the disempowered victim position. But it's a manipulation, just like this is. Again, the difference being he's consciously aware the disempowered isn't, all right? But it is about power because it's a God complex. We think we can fix them. And that has tinges, tinges, it's not narcissistic, it doesn't fit the clinical definition, but it's very similar to it, all right? And wait till you see, I'm gonna show you how this is all about power, just like the narcissist. Do you see what happens? <clears throat> when we become the victim, look at what happens in our culture. Who has all the power in our culture? The victims, right? Who now has all the fame and riches and attention? The women, right? They have their own documentary. They have millions of people sending them. Now, look, there, have been, there are a lot of terrible people sending them terrible messages that are incorrect. And I'm uh, probably narcissistic sociopaths, all right? I'm not saying that they haven't experienced, you know, true victim blaming and hurtful things that they don't deserve. But look at where they are. They have complete power because they're the victim. That's why we do it. It works. We get power from the victim position. Being a victim works in our society. It's culturally inbred into the society to be a giver. And that, what does that do? Because look at the whole dynamic of that video. What is it? Who is the elevated person? The victim. We elevate them. But they're not, see, in this case, it's a co-conspirator. Now, what it is, there's only one difference. One is conscious, the other one isn't. And they're only unconscious because we haven't taught it. But those of you who've stayed long enough and now know this, you can't ever say you're a victim. You have to take ownership and be responsible. And this is where the women are responsible. They made the choice to do this. They may, and, and, they, and that means they have to carry the responsibility of that. So again, the women are not to blame. Their culture and their family and life experiences created the emotions that created the attraction that put them in this position. Their family of origins taught them, and this is the shame dynamic, that they only have worth if they're giving themselves away. That's the problem with the shame-based victim position that we advocate in society, is these women have to, by, to meet society standards, is to play the victim so society notices them. <clears throat> and also, by fixing other people's problems, if society says you must develop a God complex, a codependent God complex that you can do this, all right? 
she also, because of society and because of family, because of the worst day cycle and because of how emotions are made, she had to be nervous. That's based on trauma. So Disney, Disney trained her to look for a beast and to look and to skew that the idea of true love is based on intensity and trauma. She's not to blame for that. And I don't think Disney even knows that that's what they're training young children to look for and that they're training them to become love addicts and love avoidance. They don't even know that. We don't, again, these, both of these processes were just discovered in the last five years of how this works, okay? So I'm not blaming anybody. You can't blame, be blamed for doing things you weren't even aware of. But that's why I teach emotional mastery. It's based on the concepts of what creates all of this, what creates it, the physiology within our body. We store trauma in our body, that physiological state. We must become aware. What's my whole process? You first look at a feelings wheel. That gets you, you know, what am I feeling? Well, to do that, you have to be in touch with your body. Then you ask yourself, where in my body do I feel this? Now, for the first time, I'm in touch with the trauma that I'm experiencing. What's my first memory of this trauma? We catalog it all the way back to the beginning. Now I see where I learned the behaviors, just like her, to be nervous and relive her trauma against herself. And the only man she's going to be attracted to in a room at 10,000 is a narcissistic sociopath who's a beast that she can manipulate from, with a God complex from the bottom victim position to feel good about herself, to heal the shame that she's completely unaware of that's caught in her worst day cycle. And then she can use denial and say, it wasn't me, which is stage four of the worst day cycle, and walk away from responsibility and get love and control of power over everybody. And so we first must connect to our body, go back to the past, and see how the original traumatic events are still running our life. Today, remember I talk about 95% of our life, we are not adult. That's more proof of it. That our emotions, when we have an emotion, they are based on our life experiences. When you experience, as you're listening to me, you're drawing on life experiences of where you felt uncomfortable and didn't like what you heard, and you're probably experiencing shame moments, feeling like I'm your father, your mother, brother, somebody saying you're bad or wrong, and you are you know might even feel like stupid. Why didn't you know this? Like you're projecting that feeling onto me and, and in yourself. You're creating it. I'm not doing it. It's all based on your trauma history, the worst day cycle, and how you are cat you learn to catalog the emotions of your life. And then you're projecting it onto me. And so those are the first two stages of the healing work and emotional mastery then teaches you the third of how to create new experiences with emotions, new definitions for all of these life situations so that you look for the prince and not the beast. That's the value of all of this. Now, how can you learn more about this? I could go on and on. But for you to accept this new truth, for you to create new neural pathways and start generating emotions that work for you, not against you, so you can look for princes and princesses and not beasts, Go to her TED Talk, this, because it'll give you a simple, in 18 minutes, you'll get a simple idea of how you're creating all of your emotions and, in a sense, destroying your own life, okay? And, and you, I know you don't like hearing that, that, oh, I don't want to be the destroyer of my life. Well, truth is truth. And see, because of your life experience with truth, you feel that's an assault against you. When, see, that's what emotional mastery teaches is, oh my God, that's one of the most wonderful things I heard a person say. Like, you can reorient your belief around that and your experience with hearing a phrase like that. But when you're stuck in the worst day cycle and shame and all of that, you want to withdraw and push away. So in 18 minutes, go to YouTube and listen to her TED Talk. Um, again, her name is Lisa Feldman Barrett, all right? And listen, you want to watch this um, YouTube video. You aren't at the mercy of your emotions. Your brain creates them. Pick up her book, How Emotions Are Made, by Lisa Feldman Barrett. Next. 
go to YouTube, go to my Worst Day Cycle playlist, and watch my five-part series on how to reclaim your authentic self by becoming trauma-informed. I walk you through the basics of the Worst Day Cycle. Those six videos will, in about, what is that, maybe two hours, you'll have an incredible sense of how the world works and how to turn your life around and get the life you deserve. All right, and it'll lower your past life experiences and lower that dread, that emotion you're creating against all of this and discomfort and everything. And hopefully for many of you, it's excitement of, oh my God, life's gonna make sense, okay? That gives you the basics. Now you wanna go deeper, again, pick up her book and then pick up my book, Your Journey to Success, where I outline the full process of the worst day cycle so you can see how you're reliving your childhood trauma based on your culture and everything against yourself to either manipulate and control from you know the falsely empowered position or the disempowered and how you're replaying everything in your life like everything in life is based off of these two processes and when you have this information man you have the world by the tail you can turn life around like that okay finally start developing emotional mastery with my emotional mastery method Go to my website, www.thegreatnessyou.com. Enroll in my free, I'm not charging you anything, Your Journey to Emotional Mastery. Well, you can learn how to start shifting all of that for free. Now, the full process, you have, you know, those are the rest of the master classes, but you get the beginning. So, my hope is you've made it this far. My hope is you feel transformed, you feel excited at the opportunity to understand life. My hope is you you heard the truth that you didn't project your past onto me and think I'm victim blaming, but you heard that I tr I'm trying to love everybody and protect everybody from predators so they can have the right information. If you feel that way, please share this video. Please leave me your comments. And most of all, man, I'm telling you, if you do this work, it's magic. Your life is about to get magical. Enjoy that journey. I felt like <laughs> Joe Biden, like staring into the camera there. <laughs> Sorry, but I'm just so excited. Once I saw this, I'm like, this is groundbreaking because this is a perfect example to show you how all these dynamics work and how if we don't teach this stuff, documentaries like that are going to continue forever. These women didn't need to suffer. They just weren't taught about this stuff and it, and it could have saved them had they known about it. So enjoy that journey.